Welcome to the party. I'm Sam Ekstrom of Locked On Sports Minnesota. Can we find a way to paint the Lions as frauds? That's my goal today. Hey, this is Arif from the White Left Substack. As you can tell, I am imprisoned. <laughs> it's great, great for the audio listeners. Luke Inman, at Luke underscore Spinman. Hey, big B-Day shout out to Mama Spinman. If you're out there watching somewhere, which I don't know. <laughs> I'm Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings. I would also like to wish a happy birthday to Luke Inman's mom. Locked On Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. It's time for the Minnesota Football Party. Welcome in on a Thursday and happy birthday to Mrs. Spinman. It's the Minnesota <laughs> Football Party. <laughs> on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I'm Sam. You've met the Lukes. You've met Arif. It's Vikings talk for the next hour or so. Ron Johnson joins a little bit later in the show. Big one this week, a Christmas Eve bout with the Detroit Lions. I'm going to try to make the case that Detroit is fraudulent. It's kind of a tough case. But also, people called the Vikings of 2022 fraudulent. So is this team like the anti-2022? Is the 2023 Vikings squad better in the 2022 Vikings squad. We'll try to make that ridiculous case as well. And uh, we've, of course, got our Week 16 parlays. But I want 20 seconds from Luke Inman after a word, of course, from Prize Picks. But I'm going to want a word on last week's holiday movie draft, Luke, to unveil the winner because everybody voted. Everybody was fired up. We got to pay that off. But first, let me tell you that Prize Picks brings you today's show the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl use code all lowercase locked on nfl for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. and the winner of last week's holiday movie draft is <laughs> who 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 won uh, team no, two here. that would be luke braun his that lineup elf Home Alone, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which Sam brought up a great point. We didn't clarify which Grinch. Did you go cartoon animation? Did think, you go Jim I think Carrey? that disqualifies the win. I believe so as well. We're yeah. actually doing some digging on that in the background. We'll have an update <laughs> later on. But uh, All right, yeah, also, You're going to find an appeal in the circuit courts? <laughs> there's an appeal. All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, stop Christmas the steal. Carol. Okay. Yeah, you're, uh, you're mystery irrelevant at Christmas Carol, which I think there's multiple Christmas Carols as well. For the record, I think I go with team two as well okay i didn't vote but sam sam let's just say you had what was your first round pick regardless let's just say i know one one you you Um, love go ahead so it's a wonderful life and muppets christmas carol 100 percent would have been on my team i just like the depth of team two more the depth is fair yeah, but, but Sam doesn't believe in sequels, right? Like, we discussed this before the show. He didn't love the Home Alone 2 pick, which is because yeah, he's never seen man- one. Manufacture <laughs> Christmas <laughs> sequel. Can't There's a reason those. that Elf didn't have a sequel. You know, yeah, but Home Alone is not yet. Give it time. Not yet. This will yeah, give, yeah, give it time. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Hollywood's thirsty, all right? They oh, yeah. Some, you know, what was the last inevitable Hollywood Christmas movie? Clone. I think it was last year. Ryan Reynolds, Will Ferrell, Spirited, I think, Great on Apple yeah, Plus. Tried good. to watch it. Not very good. I didn't like it. Uh, I disagree. Really? I disagree. I, I, you know, I, I fell was... asleep uh, for about two hours. I woke up. It was still going. I was like, what? It's still on? Okay, it might, might have been on? your problem there. Um, yeah. yeah. Home Alone 2, better than Home Alone. Toy Story 2, better than Toy Story. Cry about it, Sam. That's absurd. Uh, the Lions and the Vikings play on Christmas Eve, a chance to uh, watch some football, ignore your family gatherings, and uh, get in the Christmas spirit. That game is at <laughs> noon on Sunday. Ignore your family and get in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> I love how we all politely nodded at ignore your family. We're all yeah. like, yeah. Well, yeah. We get it. There. We get yeah. it. Football games have been played on every like major holiday and nights and weekends for the last, uh, you know, however many years we've covered the team. We're used to this. And we've conditioned but, them to it. That's correct. It, it took a long time, but we wore them down. The Lions are three-point favorites at U.S. Bank Stadium. Should be a great atmosphere. White out uh, on Sunday. I think it's it's very tough to make the case the Lions are fraudulent, but I'd like us to try. How can you knock the Lions down and convince me that the Vikings have a chance to rattle maybe not just this game, but maybe a couple wins against the Lions down the stretch? and um, even make a run at the division. Luke Inman, give me something. 
Give me something. Why is Detroit not legit? Yeah, I mean, first of all, they're red hot on offense. They can score with anyone right now. As far as yards go, only the Dolphins and Niners have more. But defensively, I think, is where you start to look at them and, and where they're susceptible. Weeks one through six, right? Seventh best defensive EPA in the league. Really good. Since that Ravens game, though, from week seven to 15, sixth worst defensive EPA in the league, bottom 10 in defensive success rate since that Baltimore game. And then, you know, I just sit back. I pull up the schedule and I look at who have you actually beat? Okay, Chiefs week one with no Travis Kelsey by one point. Uh, the NFC South, Falcons, Panthers, Bucks. No one with a winning record. Uh, the Packers the first month of the season when they weren't really clicking yet. The Raiders, Chargers, and Broncos. You blew a 21-point lead versus the Saints who aren't very good. You let them come all the way back. You win by the skin of your teeth. You lost to the Bears on Thanksgiving for... 55 minutes of that game, it wasn't particularly close. You lose to the Packers at home. And the one and only legitimate Super Bowl contender on that schedule, outside of the Chiefs, all the way back in week one, first the Ravens, great litmus test to see how good you stack up against the best of the best. You dump the bed, man. You lose by 32. So they really haven't beaten anyone worthwhile here since week one. And as good as the offense is playing right now, I still don't trust Jared Goff in the playoffs. And again, since week seven, the defense has been a problem. I don't know if it's because of guys like James Houston and, and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson being hurt or what, but bottom 10 in points allowed, bottom 10 in turnovers generated, bottom 10 in both passing and rushing touchdowns allowed. They're not good in the red zone. And it just kind of reminds me this year of a team like the Cowboys, for example. They're crushing every bad team on the schedule, and that's great. You get, I mean, that's something that you got to do, beat those bad teams. But when you get in the playoffs and you got to go through, you know, three or four games versus the best of the best, I worry about them stringing together four straight quarters of good football week after week because they really haven't done that at all this year. So, yeah, if I was a Lions fan, I mean, you're on top of the world, obviously, best season in a long time likely going to win the division, but until they get to the playoffs and win multiple games, it might be just the, the same old lions in a lot of people's books. Um, let me just give a quick, and I don't know if you've done the crossover yet, Luke with dairy, Matt dairy Matt on lions. Mm -hmm. Great host it's live. Now I loved his segment. I think two days ago on the lions, raising their season ticket prices by 80% with no explanation for next year. Saw that. Which t that tells me <laughs> that, there is a serious karmic loss coming the way of the Lions. Might be as early yeah. as this week, but g give me something, Luke Braun. This th that has first round exit and then like seven win season written all over it. <laughs> seven yeah. and ten. The, the, this is a long term business. Here's the deal with the Lions. Didn't it, well hold on? Didn't they rank like thirty first in season ticket price? Like before that price hike, I feel like. So now it's just like one, back to even, you're saying? Like right, 80% of one average. jump was awful. Like, don't get me wrong. 80% of one jump is is crazy. But they had to raise the prices. It was more so that the lack of explanation. Apparently, Rod Wood would write a letter every single year to season ticket holders. And this year, conveniently, he didn't write a letter oh. when they raised oh, it by 80%. Oh. oh, I've completely yeah. flipped. This is yeah. awful. What in the world? <laughs> so you much easier even, to You couldn't even it. just like, you, you all you, you know, one sentence letter. We're good now. That's it. We're good. <laughs> We're good now. Yeah. You, yeah. You don't need to work hard to to explain it, but you should probably send out the letter. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, the Lions have annoyed me because they get pats on the head for doing the most minimal things. Like they're good for the first time in thirty years, and everyone's like, "Oh, look at the Lions! You guys go when you feel like it." They were 500 last year, and everybody acted like it was a freaking Super Bowl. I am going to be honest. If the Lions of I'll Dan Campbell had the had had purple jerseys, they'd be called frauds. Yeah, no doubt in my mind about it. And yeah, it's okay. because their expectations are so much lower mm -hmm. because they were just so dreadful for so many decades that everybody is just like condescending and pitying them. I'm not going to do that. All right. I'm going to respect the Lions and say, you know what? You guys look look like you're headed toward a first or second round exit. Congratulations on your division title. You can stop talking about that particular streak. Let's hope you get a playoff win. Maybe you can end two streaks. But look, if they head into the playoffs and they get Matt Stafford in the Rams. Oh, okay. Boy. That will be funny. Speaking oh, of karmic boy. losses. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> can, we, can we just appreciate how coastal Luke is being right now? Hey, let me respect you for a bit. You suck. 
Hey, you're yes, not going right. Your- exactly. That's why the coasts are better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. This is the personality trait I wanted when I came out here. <laughs> uh, no, he in, wins, in real talk, how he wins these drafts. You see what he's doing? <laughs> if you look at uh, Ben Baldwin's team tiers at our RBSDM, just like EPA uh, tiered out. The Lions are in the same tier as the Vikings. Uh, and oh, if you bro. go hashtag, if you go since week four, uh, this is like offense, defense, full, like mm-hmm. all the way zoomed out. And if you go uh, since week four, which I'm not doing at all to be a b- uh, bad faith about the Vikings, uh, then the Lions defense in particular falls to the bottom half of the league. So yeah, mm. there's nobody that I would point to more, though, than Arif Hassan for building a fraud, an argument about a fraud, whether he believes it or not. Uh, I mean, well, okay, look, it actually isn't all that complicated, right? The the Lions, the way that they win is unsustainable, and the way that they lose is sustainable. If you take a look at the records for, or if you take a look at the track record of teams that win with a running game that is explosive but does not carry a high success rate. In fact, Jameer Gibbs has one of the biggest differences between EPA per play and success rate of any running back in the NFL. He's very boomer bust. Historically, well, first of all, guess what happened to the Lions last year? Exactly that, right? Um, they were a 500 team that was very inconsistent. Now, the fact that that came in the second half of the season, people were willing to pat them on the head a little bit, but ultimately, they were a 500 team, right? They had a great offense because they were explosive, and that explosiveness makes them very volatile on offense, right? So they don't have a passing game aside from Amon Ross St. Brown and a little bit of Sam Laporta that they can rely on. When they go to JMO, it collapses. When they try to go deep, it often collapses, right? Mm -hmm. When you take a look at the way that they win, that is the least reliable way to win, not just in the running game, but a running game that does not have a relatively high success rate. On defense, they lose because their secondary is poor. They have a poor passing defense. That is the biggest way to lose in the NFL is to have a poor passing defense. In fact, having a good running defense doesn't even predict how good you'll be against the run next week. Having a poor passing defense will predict how poor you do for the next several weeks. So I look, the way that the Lions win, it's fun to watch. Dan Campbell is one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And and Luke, I think that that's part of it. It's not just condescension. Mike McDaniel's doing really well. Everyone loves him too. Uh, it's just sometimes coach personalities take over, but that doesn't mean that they're good, right? I think that people people see these big plays from Jameer Gibbs and they're like, hey, we were wrong about the draft pick. And also for some reason that means you're good. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that at all. You have four good rookies. Congrats. I am ex- I've never been more confident that if the Vikings play the Lions a third time in 21 days in the playoffs, that the Vikings will win. I am. It's just I'm something calling. that would happen to the Vikings, to the to, well, both teams, it. honestly. Both teams. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. now. But whoever um, would have to be favored in play at home in that game would lose that game every right, single time. Right before yeah. a catastrophic yes. loss in the divisional round. For sure. Correct. Yep. If the Vikings win out and the Lions lose out and the Vikings win the division and then the Lions come to U.S. Bank, Lions are winning that game a hundred times out of a hundred. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that that would mean th- that would mean beating the Lions three times in four weeks. I think if the Lions host, more than likely, it would they would have split. Um, and I still would like the Vikings, but probability, I think, leans toward that matchup. I mean, odds are mm. the Lions lose to Dallas in between, so they don't get the two. Lions will be the three, and then all it would take would be a split, and the Vikings are probably your six, and. That's it. That's it right there. You're going to Ford Field two weeks in a row, and I would love the Vikings in that scenario. Well, um, I, I think right now Vikings playoff probability, if I remember right, if they lose both these games to Detroit, right, and go 0-2 and, and beat Green Bay, I think they have about a 42% chance of making the playoffs. So let's oh, just say they really? did make the playoffs. So that's funny. That's they, seems high. Yeah. Eight and nine, forty-two yeah. percent chance. Yeah. Well, Great yeah, conference. Well, that's, that's because uh, this last weekend was catastrophically bad for every yeah. playoff contender mm-hmm. except like the Rams, Seattle, and the Rams. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's Which is who we would lose those spots to, probably. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, two. I mean, two out of the three seven and seven challengers would have to run the table to knock you out, and two of them play each other tonight, Saints and Rams. So one of them has mm-hmm. to lose. Um, so the Vikings will drop to seven tonight but tiebreakers all favor them i mean there's not a, unless the bucks somehow like fall out of the division lead and are suddenly in the wild card mix 
they would have the head to head. Otherwise, it looks really good for Minnesota. I'm, oh, I'm calling the Baker, three huh? six upset. Go ahead, Water Reef. Oh, we got to cheer for Baker then, huh? Yeah, we do. All right, mm-hmm. cheer for Antoine Winfield. I'm, I'm no stranger to that. Yeah, cheer for Antoine. There you go. Um, I want to pose the question: Are the 2023 Vikings better than the 2022 Vikings? That's after a word from our partners. You got three weeks left of the regular season to join the fun at FanDuel. And then you want to be set up for the playoffs too. You want to have some money in your pocket when the playoffs come around, more bets available, higher stakes. Everybody wants to get in on the fun. At FanDuel, the offer right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Find a lopsided money line. Pick a winner, get 150 bucks that you can spread around however you want on the NFL spreads, player props, over-unders, futures, and so much more. You can even go outside of football into NBA and NHL. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Bet the NFL. FanDuel, an official partner of the National Football League. All right, we got Ron Johnson coming up momentarily, but I do want to pick your guys' brains. The 500 Vikings of this year have had major quarterback upheaval. Last year, they did not. Aside from that difference, you kind of like this team a little more than, than last year's team, and that's a big asterisk to put on it because you just can't win with quarterback unrest the way the Vikings have. But yeah, we... aside from that, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Yeah, that right. <laughs> Uh, precisely. I, I, if if we're talking just personnel, just personnel, I might take last year's team. If we're excluding the quarterback, I might take last year's team. But if we're taking like the team, right? That includes like the play calling and stuff like that. The renewed familiarity with the offense that Cousins is supposed to have. Were he healthy, I would definitely take this year's team. This defense is way too good. The offense is playing at a high level. The offensive line is playing very well. Right. Like, I don't know anybody like Addison's an upgrade over Thielen. Jefferson is Jefferson. Right. The offensive line is playing extremely well. I Like, I don't know. Like the defense is night and day. I mean, it's like what over since week four or five, they're like the third or fourth ranked defense versus last year when they were 28th. I yeah, this this team is, you know, quote unquote better. But the quarterback question seems fairly relevant. You're not wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot. Yeah. You're four points worse on offense this year per game. Scoring percentage, though, you're like Luke. You're muted. Two two places off. Yeah, that helps. Um, yeah. I was just gonna say, a reef's right. Bottom three scoring defense last year with way less veteran talent. I think too. Keep that in mind. Up until last week, going into that Bengals game, top five in scoring, top five in EPA, top five in DVOA offensively kind of touched on last year they were winning all those games you remember but they had one of the best opening drive success rates in the league KOC's opening script was like a thing of beauty at least for the first 10 12 weeks but then for like two and a half quarters it was nothing it was dead silence they fell apart the average time of possession bottom three in the league per drive I'm saying so they always had to rely on you know the big splash play from Dalvin or JJ up until those final two three minutes of every game this year you're two KOC and Kirk what's it going to look like I just think a lot more consistency drive by drive I mean we all know the stats you know when Kirk was healthy playing like an MVP quarterback they were sustaining drives though they eventually after those first three four games were playing complimentary football every week too and you know like Luke pointed out last week even in half these losses, they've outgained their opponents. So if they could just hold on to the ball, I think we'd be talking about them a lot differently. So yeah, even after losing so many big names on both sides of the ball to improve, I think in so many critical areas and be more efficient, well-rounded, you know, when they're not turning the ball over, I should say with less talent, I I think that speaks volumes. I think they are a better team. Yeah. They've been better down to down in pretty much any way you want to measure it. I think if you made a statistical Mm -hmm. case, it would like always favor this year. And the reason that they've lost more games is what Luke said, turnovers, which like they turn the ball over a ton. I don't know if you can say that they're better if they Mm -hmm. turn the ball over that Mm -hmm. much. And I don't know if I like 
like or like, I don't know if, if I can ignore the quarterback situation. It, well, I mean, yeah, the quarterback. Like, but like the thing is, if let, let's say you know Kirk is healthy and he's playing at this year's level. First of all, if he's playing at this year's level, that's uh, fairly unfair to last year's team. This year's team would crush them. But um, it's but also, it, I think, a lot to presume that it would keep up because it's Kirk Cousins. It always goes up and down. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a streaky quarterback. Um, but how the turnovers occur, I think, is another important element. Like if we well, say, a lot of them were him. There were fumbles and stuff, you know. Right, and, and that's you got backup quarterbacks say, doing it. But yeah, if we say the fumbles are the same, right? If we say the fumbles just they're fumbles, they occur, and you know both teams recover at a fifty percent rate or whatever. The picks that Cousins had thrown were like extremely not his fault in ways that are not sustainably the case, right? So. Um, there, there is like the fumbles are also turnovers, but in actuality, they're really half a turnover because the other team still has to recover it. And the interceptions are just like not really occurring it going forward in a, in a way that allows us to kind of predict turnovers. So I, the turnover issue doesn't bother me just as much. It's just like the nature of the turnovers matters. The Vikings couldn't recover fumbles this year. I think going forward, were you to compare the two teams, uh, that would not, you know, bear itself out as like a, a huge significant concern. Are these are these Vikings ten and four with Kirk? Are they on a better than that? I don't know. It three, ten and four, really yeah. depends on on the streakiness aspect of this. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, how how many? It's like a reef. It's like you always say. How many added points does Kirk Cousins give you in all these games where he's not playing? Where you got a backup in? Right. In and, games and, where he and, lost and, by and, one and two and three. Exactly. And yeah. then every week, yeah, you know, that e- you think about all those games, that equates to two or three of those losses turning into wins. Uh, I mean, yeah, instead of a 500 team, I think, four I think Sam, I think you're right. I think they are closer to a 10 and three, 10 and four kind of team going toe to toe for the division title for the second straight year in these last three games. It's yeah. very easy to imagine that. And I think what led to wins in a lot of situations, like especially in Atlanta, like they won because that game was chaotic mm-hmm. and because Atlanta was not prepared. I'm not saying Kirk Cousins doesn't also win that game, mm-hmm. but, but you not can't necessarily just slap yeah. an extra three points on every result and say that's what happened. For sure. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you I can't agree. like yeah. sure. evenly distribute it in that way. Um, but, I, but I do think the net effect, so if certainly... Yeah, of course the, it would be net better. Yeah, But I don't think you just go, well, game. yeah, slap three points on every right. other game, and look, they're 11-2 and two or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but certainly the games that they they lost by two or fewer points or something like that, which is like three of those games, I think those would flip because those were characterized in particular by poor and inconsistent offensive performance. You might lose one of either Atlanta or uh, New Orleans, and then you'll probably gain one somewhere else too. Right, Bears so. and Broncos would fe- feels yeah, so like a very strongly like those would be wins. Yeah, nine ten. Yeah, yeah, it seems okay. Uh, Ron Johnson is going to join us. We'll have him weigh in weigh in on this controversial topic. I uh, I wrote Ron in the uh, the little topic rundown. Ron Johnson's apparently I thought that there were going to be multiple Plural. of you, but uh, unfortunately it's just one of you. How are you today? Let's say two at the end of his name. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> I'm good. How's it going? Good. Going well. Um, We got the driving Ron Johnson today. Love it. Um, We were just debating if you take the quarterback out, because obviously Kirk Cousins being hurt changes everything, but do you kind of like this year's team just kind of play by play compared to last year's team a little bit more based on what they're doing defensively, what they're doing on special teams and, and stuff like that? No, give me the lucky team that has okay. a rabbit's foot stuck in their butt. <laughs> uh, four leaf clovers on their shoes, like lucky charms. Only the four leaf clovers and the lucky charms, nothing else but. Uh, yeah, give me that team that lives on a prayer that makes us give a heart attack every game. Uh, the, the only difference in this year's team versus last year's team is their losses this year have all been by one score. So that's the, the tough thing about it is it's the same team theoretically, like same one score games. They're just not winning some of these Uh, defensively. Yeah, I I do like what they're doing defensively. Uh, The problem though, is it it seems like down the stretch for some of these games, uh, there's been some fundamental uh, issues with the defensive backs. And I don't think it's on the person. Sometimes it gets blamed. I think it's sometimes on others that aren't getting the call. Um, getting a call on defense, a check or whatever it might be, uh, for those that don't really understand how it works, it's similar to a quarterback making a change. If and, and if you watch a game, you'll see a quarterback kind of run down the line of scrimmage sometimes to make sure every lineman heard him. They'll, the, you know, the running back or walk up behind him saying, What'd you say to them? 
you know, the receivers are getting the hand signals. On defense, you have to do all that, and then you don't get to control the snap. And so that's the other angle of this is like you can you can do all your checks, you can change the front, you can change the strong set, you can change everything. But if you don't have time to get it to everybody before the snap, you're screwed. And it feels like when you look at some of the plays, like the Cortland, Cortland Sutton, um, the the T Higgins, not the not the well, yeah, I guess the the, the second T Higgins one too. Um, it, it, it feels like guys are assuming the quarterback is tackled and, you know, whether they stop running just for half a second or they don't assume the quarterback is going to throw it. Uh, there's some little small effort things in there. Uh, I'm not going to point out a specific guy, but if you watch film, it'll, you'll notice it where it's like, oh, why did he stop running? Or why, why is he not chasing this guy down? Or why didn't he just take a couple more steps and try to knock the ball down? Uh, it, it just feels like sometimes they assume the sack is coming because you got a guy in Daniel Hunter. With 15 and a half, you got a guy in DJ Wanham and, you know, so many guys getting after the quarterback. It also it always feels like they're going to get them down. And when they don't, that's when you see chaos happen on the, in the defensive backfield. Hey, Ron, Gophers, quick talk about uh, they signed Coy Parrish, third highest ranked recruit ever for Fleck in Minnesota. I know he's the number three safety in the country. I think he's like top 60 player overall in the country. They grabbed that quarterback from New Hampshire, Max Brosmer, swapping him out with Cali Igmanis. Um, and then... Um, and then the uh, – the I'm blanking on his name here. Uh, the running back, the true freshman running back. He's sticking around as well. Does that move the needle for you at all for the Gophers, not only next year but just moving, um, you know, in the future at all? Does that get you pretty pumped? Well, you're talking about Darius Taylor. Kid Darius just, Taylor, thank you. Uh, out of Michigan, you know, my home state. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so I, I'd say yes. But this is the thing about football, man. and I don't really care about – like stars and all that crap because you can go back to the jj watt days of being a, a one star no star two star uh you could look at like I, a guy like myself i probably would have been just a, a two or three star um didn't have a ton of high school stats i just was six three 207 pounds in high school so uh in the social media era people would be like oh my god this dude is a big high school kid um but we didn't have that coaches had to actually come out and watch film so if you go back to like even my recruiting um, a lot of the people like Penn State and Michigan, Michigan State came late. And and that's probably where Coy is kind of in. But my, my recruiting was late where I didn't take visits until like January and February. Um, I was kind of towards the end of the signing period of uh, we didn't also we didn't have an early signing period back then either, though. But if you, you think about that, like a lot of these kids are taking visits, their official visits during the football season. I did not um, just because like, you know, again, Penn State, a lot of these schools were late to the party. Uh, Kansas was there from the start, uh, but you just never really know. So when I look at the overall scope of the Gophers, I think PJ still trying to build a program uh, by recruiting and not by the transfer portal. So I'm excited for that. The problem is you just don't know how long kids are going to stick around. And that's the problem. It's like, are they willing to stay for a year or two or, or you know, and, and not play for two years and then get in? You look at guys like Mike Lehan, uh, went to the NFL, played a couple of years in the NFL. Uh, he didn't play his freshman year, sophomore, or 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 uh, and didn't really play to his junior year, but didn't really start his junior year. Like he didn't really start he didn't really start start until his redshirt junior year, fifth fifth year senior is when he became like a starter. Where teams were like, oh, this guy is draftable. Um, Thomas Tape, running back, sat behind you know Lawrence Maroney and Mar Marion Barber, still made it to the NFL. So a lot of these guys in those systems back then, I mean, who knows if Marion Barber and Lawrence Maroney would even stay together? You know, like. One of them might have said, you know, screw this. Why am I going to split time with this guy and I can go somewhere else and get 35 carries? So that's kind of the scope of college football now is you're, you're, you're subject to that when you have a good guy. Um, but I'm never going to push it on because you can have a bunch of five stars and be a terrible-ass coach, and it's not going to matter. So I'm never going to, like, highlight five stars versus four stars. I mean, nothing against Ryan Day. Ryan Day, I just saw the picture. He had C.J. Stroud. <laughs> Jackson and Jigba, uh, uh, whatever, um, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, he had uh, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, and they mm -hmm. didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you have uh, first round, four first round draft picks in your, plus your offensive line was good, your defense was good, and you can't find a way to win? Like, come on, man. So that's why I say, like, it's always something to it. Um, you know, I, I, that's why I love seeing, like, I used to love seeing the Boise State and teams like that to go undefeated and give the big power five schools a run for their money because that's just good coaching. Um, so, I, you know, I, I want to see what P.J. does with these guys. I don't know if the offensive coordinator is the answer. Nothing against Harbaugh. Harbaugh, I love him. 
but who knows if he's the answer for Minnesota. Kirk Shiraka found a way to get it going. Uh, it hasn't seemed like the offense had it. If it's if Max Brosner comes in and has a great year, then we can say anything Kelly Mans wasn't the guy. But until then, it's all speculation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, man, I, I really like the energy that you had for Ohio State there. Maybe Brian Hartline should be their head coach. Uh, <laughs> um, so we spent a little bit of time on the show earlier talking about whether or not we could uh, contort ourselves into an argument that the Lions are frauds, whatever. I'm more curious about Jordan Love because I've been on this. This guy is actually a fraud. His numbers aren't that good. Trained for a little bit, and then he has this four-game stretch, admittedly mostly against bad defenses. Uh, but, you know, he had a good one against Kansas City, uh, and then people are like, hey, maybe he's good, and then he puts up a clunker last week. How much have you watched of him? What do you think of him? Did the Packers stumble into another quarterback? What's going on? Yeah, actually, I've done a lot of, uh, not a ton of Jordan Love, but I've a lot of the film study I've been breaking down has been, like I try to find like opponents that the Vikings defense has faced to see how he did against the Lions, how he, you know. And so I have watched like the Packers-Lions game, for instance. Um, and, and you see, like mainly I was looking at the Packers defense and the Vikings, or, or sorry, you know, Lions offense, Packers defense to see what Brian Flores can do to uh, Jared Goff. Uh, but then when you watch the other side of it too, you watch the Packers. The thing about Jordan Love, when he understands the, the I guess, the concept, um, he's pretty good. Like he hits that fifth step or that third step and he's letting the ball fly. The biggest problem I think he struggles with, and this is maybe just youth and not time, and he doesn't have like a Jordy Nelson or Devontae Adams where he feels like he can just throw the ball knowing that guy's going to be there. It feels like I feel like he holds the ball sometimes a little too long. And then when it's time to throw it there, the window's not there anymore. So he throws a little bit maybe further out of bounds to make sure it's not a pick. Um, I, I think it's that I don't, I don't feel like he has complete trust in all his receivers right now. Like I think he trusts them to, when the, when the play is there to be there, but he doesn't have like a Stefan Diggs or Justin Jefferson. Um, and so I'm always going to lean towards that. I think if you give him a guy, and that's why, you know, Aaron Rodgers for years was pissed off at them drafting quarterbacks and running backs and never drafting a receiver when they had a chance, um, is because Aaron Rodgers even knows you need a guy. Like you need one guy at least um, to kind of bail you out of trouble. And, you know, you, you see that with, you know, even with Nick Mullen, some of the throws he makes, you see, you know, Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson save him from himself. And I think that's the big difference. Um, the Packers don't really have that guy right now. I asked this to Matt Derry on Locked On Lions. We just did the crossover. Uh, we asked each other who needs to step up for this game. Who is the guy that if they have a good game, their team wins. Bad game, their team loses. Who's that guy for the Vikings? Ooh, I got it. You know what? Uh, this is probably not a super sexy one for me for everybody, but I'm gonna go Ty Chandler. Like I feel like Ty Chandler has to have like. We're not going to see the, the production he had against the Bengals. The Bengals' uh, run game, you know, run defense wasn't great. Um, but I feel like, you know, when you look at the Vikings and Lions' run defense, they're pretty similar. they both given up, like, under 100 yards a, se- you know, a game. Uh, I think the Lions are 95. The Vikings are at 92. So not far off of each other. The thing we see about the Vikings is they give up runs sometimes in inopportune times. And I think that's why you need Ty Chandler. Like, you need Ty Chandler when Aiden Hutchinson's tired – and he's worn down and you're going to run an outside, you know, play where you could possibly cut it back, but you push the edge to see if Aiden Hutchinson is maybe he's just going to Olay the bit and say, screw this. I don't want to deal with Christian Derrissaw right now. And he takes one. So I think Ty Chandler has to have a solid game. Um, he, I picked him as my lottery player. So hopefully we don't see, uh, looks like Alexander Madison didn't practice uh, again. So, mm-hmm. you know, most likely it looks like a Ty Chandler game. So I'm hoping that Ty Chandler has a solid game and not just in there too. Aiden Hutchinson is a sucker for a screen uh, because he is so aggressive. And so same bit, like if you can chip block that, that rib, make him think like I got to get to the quarterback and don't give him any indication, throw a screen behind him. Ty Chandler in space is dangerous. Uh, These, these lions defensive backs have been like a round Robin kind of like hurt in out suck. You get out the game. Uh, You start, you start, you get out. That's another opportunity why you just run go routes or routes to make them turn their backs, and then you let your running back loose. Uh, I've got one more for you, Ron. The Brian Flores defense has been good for a lot of people, but you know who it's not been good for? The 2022 Vikings draft class. Um, Asesio Mewo, Gophers guy, yet cut. Lewis Seen, buried on the depth chart. 
Andrew Booth, passed by Makai Blackman, Brian Asamoa, passed by Ivan Pace and Troy Dye on the depth chart. All three of those guys, Seen, Booth, Asamoa. Is there hope for them in their Vikings career now with basically two lost seasons under their belt? Uh, uh, special teams. Uh, Brian Asamoa's biggest issue is not him. It's more of Ivan Pace. Um, Lewis Seen's biggest issue is I don't think it was him either. I think it's Cam Bynum. Uh, it, it sucks when you uh, get hurt or you start off behind the eight ball and then the guy that's in front of you just absolutely kills it. If those two guys weren't killing it, I think that you would see more produ- or at least opportunities from the mm-hmm. other guys. But Cam Bynum is a potential, you know, like franchise, you know, and not franchise like big money, but like decent amount of money, 10 year safety. Like he's shown he can be here for years. He can cover. Um, he, he hasn't really hit his Antoine Winfield bit yet where he comes down and covers a ton. Uh, but but as a former cornerback, you, you see you're going to see that coming more than not, because he does like to cover running backs, he said, and tight ends uh, when actually when he was on the Ron Johnson show. Um, and, and he talked about that, like, you know, still loving to cover, still loving to be in the, you know, the covered scheme if he can and not just a deep safety. So uh, I, I don't I don't think it's their fault. I just think it's the guys in front of him. A says he that one was just weird. But same thing. DJ want like, you know, like it's it's always about a guy in front of you just you know, not giving you a chance to get on the mm-hmm. field. And that's that's why football in, in any pro sport is, is tough because at any time they draft or bring a guy up or a guy in your class that you don't think should be the guy, and then all of a sudden he becomes the guy, and you're like, dang, like that guy's better than we thought. I mean, look at – like Bart Scott is one of those guys. Bart Scott with the Ravens. Um, Ed Hartwell was the guy next to Ray Lewis. All of a sudden, Bart Scott starts balling out. Ed Hartwell, you know, doesn't get money from the Ravens, so he has to go elsewhere because they're like, look, we can, we can, we can go, we can pay Bart. Why would we pay you? And so that's that's kind of the thing. Ed Hartwell was they thought was going to be the next guy behind Ray, it ended up being Bart Scott. Uh, so and Bart was an undrafted guy. So you just never know, you know, what you're going to get out of your draft class sometimes in your un, you know your undrafted free agent group. It's good stuff, Ron. Uh, you can hear Ron Johnson all over the place. Tuesdays, the Ron Johnson Show. Wednesdays. Minnesota basketball party today, Minnesota football party. And tomorrow he hosts the round table with Reggie Wilson and Julia Daniels, and then catch him after Sunday's Vikings game on the Vikings postcast. He's our versatility man here on locked on sports, Minnesota. He's Ron Johnson and he's good at what he does at three Ron Johnson on X. Uh, Thanks for joining us, Ron. Appreciate you guys. All right, we've got week 16 parlays, and the deficit is growing for Luke Braun. <laughs> Woo, boy. Next. Christmas Eve can make for a large task uh, in the kitchen. If you've got family, you got to make food for everybody. That can be stressful. Uh, you go to the grocery store last second, they're out of stock. They've got nothing. The, the shelves are barren. There's tumbleweeds going through the grocery store. So you need something fast. Uh, there's football coming up on Christmas Eve, so you probably got family and football. They need food, and you need DoorDash. Uh, whenever the game clock stops, you got a commercial break, hop on the DoorDash app and fire up your order. Get uh, groceries, get restaurant food ordered straight to your door with DoorDash. Why root on an empty stomach? Get prepared before game day and before Christmas uh, from retail to groceries to your favorite restaurants. Get the apps, get the entrees, get the desserts, get the drinks straight to your door with the very easy to use DoorDash app. And here's the deal right now. 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and the code is LOCKED23, subject to change, terms apply. Don't forget, LOCK23, 50% off up to $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend 15 bucks or more. Subject to change, terms apply. Here's where we stand in our season-long betting contest. We started with a thousand mythical dollars doing a parlay per week. Arif, you are the leader. You won last week. You are four and eleven on the year, fourteen hundred dollars and change. I'm two and thirteen. I've got eleven hundred and twelve dollars. Inman has one more win than me, but I've got more money because I think I won. I had a huge week um, one time. So Inman's got nine hundred sixty-four. So two of us have won money. Inman's treading water a little bit, and then there's Luke Braun. <laughs> one and fourteen. And then one and fourteen on these. It's it's incredible. I think I've gone zero and two more than I've gone one and one too. Just incredible. 
<laughs> yeah. Yep. You, Beautiful, really. Not even close. Yeah. Lost it's three consecutive incredible. tax bets. And we're yeah. at the stage, Luke, where if you want to make up this deficit, just a standard parlay is not enough. You're going to need to yeah, like, I gotta guess get... the exact score to make. I got to get like, <laughs> a 700 plus eight. I've got one. If I get everything, I've got one. Well, it's plus 368. That'll get me back into uh, into the black if I hit it. Okay, very good. Well, the the first one to bet is you. So you get your pick, uh, and then you have to wait for the the turnaround. But you pick first. Maximum is sixteen hundred dollars. I assume that's your wager. Absolutely. So here's the deal. These have been so bad. I'm convinced that they're cursed. It can't just be that I'm this wrong. Uh, so I'm I deciding to weaponize that curse. Uh, <laughs> and the reverse jinx. And, and some of this has been insane. Like Mark Andrews touchdown prop out for the season in the first quarter. I bet on Tyreek Hill out for the game in the first quarter. Like, oh, so these are just like your fault. Like you're, hurting. yeah, right, exactly. So I'm gonna weaponize this and say uh, alternate spread: Detroit Lions minus six point five. I've got to move the spread a little bit to get the the yep. odds up so that I can do this. But yeah, I'm I'm betting on the Lions to try to weaponize this curse. Go Vikings! Beautiful uh, little reverse jinx action. Uh, yep. I'm next. And I'm going to roll with the interim coach vibes with the Chargers getting 12 and a half points. 12 and a half. Taking that every half. time. Every time. Easton Stick. Inman. <laughs> I am going to go with the Saints Rams under 46 and a half. Thursday night unders. There you go. Love them. Al Michaels will be all over it. Um, Arif. <laughs> As much as he's enthused about anything these days. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, I'll also dip into that Chargers game, uh, except uh, Josh Allen over 243 and a half passing yards. A little bit concerned about that, given the 12 and a half point spread and the fact that I don't think Easton Stick has the ability to make a game of it. He is an NDSU quarterback after all, but we'll see. Um, I've also got, because I've got the snake, right? Um, yeah. I've also got the Cincinnati Bengals minus one and a half. It is Jake Browning season. Let's buy in, <laughs> folks. Surely this won't crash down to earth. Does not matter. I am betting the minimum. Yeah, fair enough. Which I uh, would be for plus 258. Plus 258. You got it. Luke Inman. Back to me, huh? Um, let's go. Let's uh, let's stick with that Chargers Bills game. I'll go the other way. Easton Stick. Over 201 passing yards, excuse me, 201 and a half passing yards. Um, and the minimum this week is what? 160. 160. Let's go one. Let's go 180. Luke, 180 what color to is win. Eastern Sticks hair. Wait, what? What color is Easton Sticks hair? Oh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> oh, we we don't do that. Not in this show. Yeah, big fan of Easton Stick. I can tell. Huge fan. Um, <laughs> went to a college somewhere. Uh, 180 to win 450, 172. There you go. 51, 72. Uh, I'm going to go just for fun. Puka and Cooper Cup to combine for 200 receiving yards tonight. Got to have some rooting interest. Wow. How do you do All that? Right. That's cool. That's so funny. Somebody with the, un uh, the under and someone with 200 uh, receiving yards combined among two receivers. I like it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. These these primetime games have like some special betting that's, options. That's if fun. You, I like check that. the day of. Yeah. I thought you were going to yeah. go Puka and Cooper both to score an anytime touchdown. But either one. I mean, that, that one's fun too. The, those touchdown props scare me like it just the odds i mean how many touchdowns are scored in a game right like two, no i get it three. unless it's jalen hurts or david <laughs> yeah, montgomery two, two i hate it scored in a game sam for one <laughs> team like if you're assuming that the rams are going to score two touchdowns through the air um you said how many know, touchdowns I, are scored in a game two yeah for by one team like two okay so you're you're then you do hey, I, I, every guys. every time every time I've gone in on uh Jalen Hurts touchdown yeah. anytime score I've I've cashed on that. I'm, so. I'm like two and oh on David Montgomery. So yeah. by the way, I mean, 0 and two on Jalen Hurts touchdown props. <laughs> so funny, dude. Stop it. Oh my gosh. Eat what me. is going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Did you, gra did you grab him and then suddenly he had the flu? Is that what happened? <laughs> no, he just, it just, it, he got it one time. He got it overturned. Like it was like by an inch and <laughs> yeah. And another time it's, it was like, 
they just never had a had a uh, one yard line play. They just didn't incredible. need it. Incredible! Oh my god! It's so incredible. Uh, anyways, Sam Laporta, anytime touchdown scorer. Oh, you're going in on the curse. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm going in on the curse. I mean, I'm not trying to injure Sam Laporta. I want to be very clear Sounds about like that. Sounds like I'm you not are rooting for injury. I, I, I am not rooting for injury Let's on see the Sam Laporta. Where is it? I am Where's rooting the voodoo for voodoo failure doll? for Sam Laporta. Yeah. Which can odds? be expressed in many ways, including an injury. Which I'm not expressly rooting for. Expressly? <laughs> now what's going on? Sam, let's get out of here. What are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> Any more that? trouble. Hey, I found an escape oh. tunnel, by the way. I can get out of it. <laughs> that is uh, plus 368. I would win $5,900 if I if I hit that. $5,900. Is yeah. a reef in yeah. prison break right now? The show Prison Break? <laughs> What's going on? Look, I, the, I've i I've had a lot of time with this tunnel. I've got some molding around it now. <laughs> Love it. Good. It's gone good. Yeah. Good. Blink twice if you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> For audio listeners, he, he blinked twice, maybe three times. <laughs> maybe yeah. three times. Uh, those are the picks this week, and that's the Minnesota football party. We'll be back on Sunday, Vikings postcast. Ron Johnson, myself, the Lukes are going to the game. Hey, Arif, want to join the Vikings postcast on Sunday? Nope. Okay. Um, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, you'll be in you'll be in Vermont. You probably can't even watch the game. Um, but we'll be back next Thursday. No show on Christmas. Oh Enjoy your holidays. Enjoy the stockings, the presents, the family, the food. And uh, have a wonderful holiday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See ya.